What's going on everybody? Today is metal day out here in Wesley Chapel. I'm gonna have to speak a little loud because the guy's working behind us, but we wanna go ahead and take a moment and show you exactly why it's so hard to do some of the things that we talked about throughout this entire process. So one of the big things that kept on coming up was, hey, acid wash floors, are they cheaper than doing regular cover up floors like an LVP? Josh, why don't you take a step over there and take a look. You'll be able to see throughout this entire process, these guys, go ahead and make a absolute mess of this slab when we start putting these buildings up. And there's absolutely no way to get around that without some uh, coverings on the wheels or some stack of the lumber. But at the end of the day, it makes a lot more sense for you to go ahead and just cover up the slab, go with some type of LVP, some type of carpet, some type of flooring inside, and not have to really address any of that extra additional work hazard. So I know Nick just talked to you guys about acid washing, the concrete, because all the staining that could happen and the tractors and everything rolling on it. But what really amazes me about these barn does is that I was talking to Josh about it as well. You know, you see this heavy, heavy steel, right? But in between our connectors, look at this. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy to me. It is crazy to me how light they actually really are, but so firm and steady as well. So this is really, really cool. I'm really glad we're finally here at this stage in uh, Wesley Chapel. So stay tuned for some more video because it's going to be pretty awesome. Alright guys, so there's this mysterious hole here. <laughs> Nick's gonna tell us what it's all about. Go ahead, Nick. So we went ahead and preemptively took a quarter sample of our slab at the thickest point, which is about three foot deep. So we can see where the slab cure process actually was. And what's really cool is what you told me is that actually it was actually a lot harder than we anticipated. Yeah, yeah so our uh, our design called out for 3500 PSI. At 10 days, we were over 4,000 PSI on every segment that they tested. And then we drill here specifically because why? This is the footer. So, right? yeah, in our corners, the corners are the biggest size footings that we have. So, our footings are about five and a half foot wide, five and a half foot wide by about three foot deep. They're covered in steel, they got rebar all over them. Everything's, uh, everything's a mess down in this hole. Right? <laughs> so, uh, what we did here specifically is it was far enough to where we weren't going to see any cracking towards the actual corner when we set our post, but it should have been the area that would have been the thickest amount of concrete. Right. Because so I'm not so worried about the thin areas of concrete because those cure pretty fast, right? Because right. concrete's curing from the outside in. Right. Uh, the thickest part of our slab should have had the loosest amount of concrete at 10 days towards the interior. So tell everyone the difference between our regular block home footings versus how much they are compared to the difference. Yeah, so surprisingly on the on the barn dominiums like this, when we're doing a monolithic barn dominium, we don't have a stem wall, we're using a traditional block footing around the entire perimeter. And that's just to tie everything together so that nothing starts pulling apart and spacing itself separately. Uh, what you have to do when you have these big columns that are actually taking most of the look, is we have to set up pretty big pad footings in specific areas so that the concrete's not overstressed in certain areas when uh, when we get hurricane strength winds. So I made a video really quick when you were over here talking to the guys. I'm, we were, I was talking about how extremely light these actually are. 
to maneuver and then how we now attach the cables after that's up. So talk about the cable process. Yeah, so talk about these first. Sure. Uh, these are incredibly light in this direction. Yeah. Right? Right, right, right. So you start pulling it in this direction, you right. got nothing. Right. It's because they're designed specifically for the wind load coming in. Okay? So it, it's a lot harder to start pushing on the outside of this and get it to move anywhere. Right. <laughs> than it is to go ahead and get your flexure up and down. What will end up happening though, is as we get all these set up, you can see these tabs coming up here, we're gonna have another line across there. Wherever our windows are, we'll have two verticals right. on those sides. Right. That stiffens that whole area up. And then what happens is when you put the panels on the outside, you get screws every 16 inches is on the side of these panels. So on the outside of the slip, it's gonna keep everything extremely rigid. Uh, what ends up happening with the columns though, is these are kind of hard to square up on their own, right? right? So you can kind of see we got a little bit of movement in there. What we have on basically our outside four corners is a cross brace of cables that we can actually go ahead and tighten up individually so we can regain the square of the building. It's like I said before, and you'll see in the video, it's literally our erector set. It's yeah. our, it's our our kid erector set and now we're, we're adults putting it together. That's it. So here they are now, Josh, launching another one, going up, going up and around. And uh, let's see the time lapse of this. We'll see you in a second. So the first week of December, we yep. poured concrete here. And we always talk about setting the expectations with the customer. Right. And it's the, it's, this is a hurry up and wait thing that we talk about all the time. But at the end of the day, if you're communicating with them and we're letting them know the process, we're finally here. So Nick, what is next after this? Yeah. All construction is hurry up and wait. Yeah, okay? it's true. <laughs> so we've always got kind of milestones that we're trying to get to for the next thing. And that's right. what we're... We're striving for it, we get to that point, and now we've got to remobilize everybody else who's right. waiting on that thing to actually get approved. Would right? you say we had any hiccups between that period, time, that time period on this one? In between concrete and erection? No, Nothing. No, it's just, just not waiting. It's been pretty standard on this. Uh, so what you're gonna see here now is the building's gonna pretty much go up today. Uh, all the shell's gonna be done. Yeah. We're gonna bring in our framer to go ahead and frame out some porches, frame out where our windows are gonna go, set the windows, set the doors. And then the metal building company will go ahead and mobilize again right. to go ahead and put the insulation up and the actual siding on and finish off the outside. Yeah. So we probably got from the time that we're now to the time that we've got the entire shell done, probably about a week and a half. Yeah. So this is what you guys have been waiting for. So now everything goes up, week and a half, and now we're back to we're going slow again, yeah. right? Because it is built, it's building a home. Uh, it's gonna look like it's complete from the exterior, right. but you don't realize you got probably another two to three months inside. Right, so remember guys, it's no different than we build our block homes or our stick homes, right? So we have a framing, we have electric, we gotta connect our plumbing, yep. right? Then, oh, then your drywall goes in, then your texture, then your paint, then your cabinets, then your all flooring, all of that, just it takes time. But at the end of the day, we're here walking through that process every step of the way. Now the question is, if they do want to make a change internally, do they still have that capability? We've got some flexibility for changes internally. Uh, where it really starts hindering things is if we want to move appliances, if we want to move cabinets, if we want to move windows, that kind of stuff we kind of have a look for. Um, it costs, it, it can be done, but it's costly. Right, the things that can go ahead and change at this point would be you know, changing a swing door to a pocket door. <laughs> right. Uh, changing, uh, you know, certain types of wall textures. You know, maybe you want an orange peel instead of a knockdown. That's stuff we can change up pretty easily. Right. Um, but yeah, as, as far as structure is or structure is, we're to the point where there's no going back to, unless you cost quite a bit of money. <laughs> That's right. Um, and once again, there's a ton of options, like Nick was even saying, even with our wall textures. People sometimes they want a level five smooth, and then that gets really, really expensive. Yeah. But it's also a certain look that people are looking for today. And then I've, obviously, have you seen? the Venetian plaster, and then everything that we just saw in Vegas. Yeah. Like all that new stuff that's coming in and, and different kind of walls and, and your solid walls for, for showers. But anyway, there's a ton of things that can happen in this home. 
And this customer, once again, very eclectic. Yep. And they're introducing a lot of things to us that they want us to implement, which is just their stuff. So we got to figure that stuff We've out. we got all kinds of cool stuff that's going to be going in this house. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, as far as uh, changing out types of cabinets, I think we've got a whiskey barrel going in somewhere. Awesome. And, you know, so really cool stuff coming up. Yeah, stay tuned. That's good enough, we'll just bring it back so they know where it is.